Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to my beautiful rideshare revolutionaries. It's me, Geo. Y'all know the fuck it is. The man, the myth, and the machine. And um, I got some food. Did the morning rush for drove from like 4:20 to 10:20. Got some food. Now I'm at the parking lot of gym, and I'm like, you know what? I think I need to explain my behavior a little bit to you guys. Um. It's gonna be a no ad video, so don't worry about it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put you guys through a bunch of nonsense with with ads with this one. Oh, God, I love this shit. All right, I want to clue you guys into my personality. I wasn't always this loud asshole. I mean, no, I'm gonna. It's not like I just became this loud asshole when I had this YouTube channel. Because, I mean, I know I called out the website driver when I had, like, 400 subs or something like that. And he didn't like that too much. That's always been me. I've always had that personality. I'm always the one to say, when something sucks, I'm the first one to say, like, no, that sucks. That doesn't make sense. That's bullshit. When something sucks, I say it. I've always had that personality. I'm always the first one... When, when other people make videos or when they're clickbaiting or when they're lying to their audience, intentionally lying or misleading their audiences, and you guys know which channels I'm talking about, I'm usually the first one to do it, and then you guys say, Gio, you're trying to stir up drama. Stop trying to... Like, no, guys, when something sucks, you know why people get away with this bullshit? Because you guys are allowing it. Do you know why the clickbait hub clips, clickbaits every video? Because you guys allow it. Do you know why the failed journalist makes up stories for views because you guys let them get away with it. That's why this shit happens. Because there isn't enough people checking them. That's why it's... And and I know, I know oh, you're bringing up all... No, no, no. The people that do this kind of stuff will continue to do it if their audience doesn't stop them. Right? Because they, they're shameless. It's, it's, it's shameless self-promotion. You know, everyone's just trying to get ahead, right? And I'm thinking back. I don't even know what reminded me of this. I, maybe I was, just, I was just driving around. And there's people, there's so few people in this world that I genuinely hate. But the kind of people that I really, really, really hate are the ones who will say anything. And do, just not do. They'll say anything to get ahead. Because talk is cheap, like I said. Talk is super cheap. And we got a bunch of people on YouTube that are all talk. But thinking back to a story, in my old pro wrestling days, um, I'm going to go ahead and say his name because he's outed as a fucking loser anyway. Um, so I was training from 18 till... I mean, I stopped training when I was like 23, but I was still doing shows and, st and stuff like that. And I actually found a video of a match if you guys want to watch it. It's really not that good. I wasn't that great of a wrestler. Um, but if you guys want, I'll, I'll upload it. Um, so I was training for like five, six years. Stopped training as much, but I still was, you know, doing shows, getting booked, stuff like that. And around the time I was like 23, no, maybe, maybe like 22 and a half, this one guy popped up. Who I've met before. And uh, this dude was like obsessed with Hulk Hogan. Right? Obsessed with Hulk Hogan. And he'd always wear like... He would dress like Hulk Hogan. He'd wear like like sweatpants. And he'd always wear like a cutoff tee. And he was a fat buck. He was like 400 pounds. Um, and not in shape. Not like, not like a beefy 400 pounds. Like he was like a fat 400 pounds. Man titties three chins. It was disgusting. But the lifelong dream of this guy was to be a pro wrestler. That's what, that's all this guy ever wanted to be in his life. The problem is, didn't have any charisma, didn't have any athletic, like, athletic ability. Uh, he wasn't likable, but the only thing he wanted in his life was to be a pro wrestler. So for the longest time, do you guys hear that alarm going off? For the longest time, this guy had a bunch of people convinced that he was Hulk Hogan's personal assistant. Because people would be like, hey, dude, can I get an autograph? Hogan would be like, yeah. And then weeks later, he'd give him like a trading card or something or, you know, a poster signed by Hulk Hogan. 
And I was like, oh my God, because this guy was, I mean, dedicated fan. He had tons of Hogan shit. Ton, I mean, he had a whole house full of Hogan shit, right? So, eventually, I remember I was at a show one time. And this dude never trained, by the way. He never trained to be a pro wrestler. We're at a show and we're watching the show. And then this one dude from WWE De Developmental, which if you guys aren't to know, um, the people who are on TV right now, most of them, unless they were big name talent from other organizations, they all were at OVW or what's the one they have now? FCW or something? Florida Championship Wrestling. Like WWE trains them in a certain way for months, years, and then they move up. Once, once they like, once they're in developmental for a certain amount of time, where WWE's like, okay, they're they're okay to start getting put on TV, then they get moved up to TV. So we're there, and there's one guy who's a local wrestler in the scene, who was actually really really good. Uh, I don't know his name personally, but his gimmick in Chicago was Ego Tisco Fantastico. He was a very tall, lean, muscular uh, dude, and he's very athletic and all that. Uh, Great build, great look, great charisma. I don't know what happened with him. I don't know why they didn't bring him up, but they eventually let him go of his contract. But he was at a show, and I said, hey, dude, I I told him, I was like, hey, dude, I've seen your work plenty of times. You're, you're a great work. And he's like, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. He's like, are you, are you a worker? And this is back when I was a wrestler, and I was like, yeah, I've been in the business for about four or five years now. He's like, all right, man, keep at it. You got a good – I think he said – he's like, yeah, that's, that's cool, man. He's like, uh – I'm always happy to, like, meet other wrestlers and stuff like that. And then I was staying next to Seder, who's, you know, 5'9", 400 pounds. And he asks Seder, he's like, oh, are you a worker too? And this dude's never been in the ring. Never been in the ring. Seder. And he, he immediately, like, puts his chest out. And he's, he's like, yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been a worker for 10 years. This guy's never been in the ring one fucking time. But he's lying in the face of WWE, WWE talent. Before that, I never heard this dude lie. I never had a reason to not believe that he anything. Like I never, you never gave me a reason to, to disbelieve you. But when you're gonna stand there and lie to the face of someone to try to make stuff look good over something that's not even that big of a deal, that starts throwing up real like. What's that shit called? Just real red flags. The spidey sense was just like, wait a minute. What? So then down the line, this dude tries getting booked on shows. And he actually was getting booked on shows. And here's a garbage wrestler, not athletic, not charismatic. <clears throat> Sorry. But he was getting booked on shows because he was telling local promoters if they put him on a show, he'll put in a good word for Hogan. Hogan will show up. So this dude, with no athletic ability, no wrestling talent, no in-ring ability, no charisma, is getting booked and like almost like main eventing local wrestling shows, all be all based on the lie that he's gonna get Hogan to show up at one of their shows. And this was going on for years, and I was the only person vocally saying, "Stop booking this fucking guy," because they're telling me, in shape, charismatic. We don't have room for you on the, on the on, you know, we don't have a spot for you on the show. Because I'm like, why are you, out loud, I'd say, why are you booking Seder? You got a spot for him, but not for me. He's like, oh, yeah, but you know, the, with Hogan. But I'm a better wrestler, more athletic, more charismatic. I had everything. I mean, I wasn't the best wrestler. I wasn't the most athletic, most charismatic, but I knew what I was doing. I knew how I put on a show. I wasn't lying to anyone. <laughs> this went on for years. And the same dude, Chris Sater, tells everyone he's dying of cancer. Immediately at that point, like, oh my god, can't this can't be possible? How 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 does how does such a horrible thing happen to such a great person? Because this dude had this great facade. He had this great facade. This this nice Christian boy, you know, takes care of his family. Which I mean, I can go into more personal things about how that's bullshit, but um. Actually, no, fuck it. Let's go into personal shit. The first time I met this guy, we were at a Wendy's. And he was complaining about buying his nephew $7 worth of food. A year later, he was fucking pussy whipped over this Polish chick. 
and he's telling us how he's taking her to Gibson's and he's taking her to all these nice fancy dinners and all this shit. And, and I'm back at my, and like this is already when I'm, I was starting to have real doubts about this guy. I'm like, wait a minute, you're the same guy that was complaining about how much your nephew spent on food at Wendy's, but you're taking this fucking chick out <laughs> for two hundred dollar dinners. Doesn't make sense to me. So all that's going on. So anyway, so he's he's doing all this shit, right? He's telling everyone he's got cancer. Never lost weight. None of his hair fell out. But it tells me, oh my god, I don't know, my, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. I don't know if I'm gonna survive. This is horrible. He's sob story. That whole time, he's making moves on other guys, girls. The people he called friends. He was telling all of them. And here's the thing. And the ones he had friend, he was friends with. He was telling me, he's like, oh yeah, he's like. It's like, you know, keep looking at me. I know Hogan never came around, but he's like, if you keep putting me on shows, it's like, I'll, I'll try to get you. I'll, I'll open the door for you for WWE because Hogan knows all them. If you're, if you're cool, like, you know, if, if you keep booking me, if you keep with me on shows, I'll, put, I'll make Hogan put in a good word for you. So he's giving false hope to like dozens of dudes. False hope. Never going to happen. And then when he says he's dying of cancer, he's trying to make moves on some of these guys' wives. Because he is a fucking nasty fat fuck. He can't get no pussy. He's a disgusting, filthy human being. Ugh, nasty dude. And so then he got he got outed at some point, right? I found out later because that's when, this is about the time I stopped wrestling. I was just like, I'm done with it. I started doing MMA because I, I got tired of not having my spot on shows but people like him were getting booked, and I was like, if that's the way it's going to be, I mean, there's backstage politics, and then there's backstage bullshit. But I said, if that's the way it's going to be, I just won't. I'll move on to something else. Like, I loved, I loved pro wrestling. I made some of the best friends ever pro wrestling, but I wasn't going to deal with that amount of bullshit because I earned my spot on whatever card I was on. This dude never did. That's bullshit. So, moving on. At some point, it became public. Jimmy Hart, the mouth of the, mouth of the South himself, someone asked him his opinion on Seder, and then he's like, he's like, hey man, he's like, what do you think is this, is Seder like a good personal assistant to Hogan or something like that? And then the mouth of the South was like, he's not Hogan's personal assistant. He's Hulk Hogan's stalker. <laughs> he was never employed by Hulk Hogan. So I guess what happens is, uh, I guess they were just they were. Sater stalked him for so long that Hogan just kind of like led him into a circle. But the entire time, he never worked for him. And Sater, all the shit that, all the autograph shit that Hogan or that people were getting from him that thought oh, from Hogan, was actually just Sater doing himself. And he was selling the merchandise, passing it off as Hogan's. That's how he made all this money. He said he made all this money as a personal assistant when he was actually just hawking fake signatures. So he got outed and all that stuff. And like it kind of it disrupted a French it disrupted the friendship I had with some of these guys. You know, and the reason I tell you the story is some people, and they exist on YouTube, they exist in the ride share category on YouTube, will say anything for ad revenue, for views. And you guys know who I'm talking about. One of them's glasses shine blue. One of them has diabetes. They will say anything for ad revenue, for views. When you, when you lie needlessly to a complete stranger, like Sater did to Egotisco Fantasco, and that was someone lying to their face. These chumps, they lie through a, through a phone, through a screen, through a camera. They're lying to people they'll never meet. All I'm saying is, having doubt and skepticism is a good thing. Be a critical thinker. Use your brain. When someone is clearly lying to you, and they never met you, that should show you what, your, what their intentions are. So that's all I got for this one, guys. Uh, yeah. Quick story, uh, and like I said, I was I was always the per. That wasn't a quick story. Um, 
If something sucks, I say it. I lost friends over it. I stopped wrestling over it. If something sucks, say it. Have integrity. Don't just allow people to lie because they, they seem like okay people on screen. Because you never know, they might try to take your wives like this dude did. So, all right, guys, that's all I got for this one. Everyone, stay safe, stay driven, stay classy. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.